all things are difficult before they become easy. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's episode of 7 Good Minutes, in our Mindful Monday segment, we get some great advice on mindfully doing hard things. Enjoy. You probably don't have a problem playing video games or browsing social media on your phone. In fact, I have no doubt you could sit in front of a screen and do both of those activities for two hours or even longer without breaking your concentration. But what about half an hour of studying? Oof, that might be too hard. How about working on your side business for another hour? Hmm, doesn't sound too appealing. Even though you logically know that studying, exercising, building a business or something equally productive will bring you more benefits in the long run, you still prefer watching TV, playing video games and scrolling through social media. One might argue that it's obvious why. One activity is easy and doesn't require much effort, while the other activity is difficult and it requires you to apply yourself. But some people seem to have no problem studying, exercising or working on their side projects regularly. Which begs the question, why are some people more motivated to tackle difficult things? And is there a way to make doing difficult things easy? To answer this question, we need to look at this brain neurotransmitter. Dopamine. Dopamine is often considered a pleasure molecule. But that's not quite what it does. Dopamine is what makes us desire things. And it's that desire that gives us the motivation to get up and do stuff. If you're not sure how powerful dopamine is, let me introduce you to a few experiments neuroscientists did on rats. The researchers implanted electrodes in the brains of rats. Whenever the rat pulled a lever, the researchers stimulated the rat's reward system in the brain. The result was that the rats developed a craving so strong they kept pulling the lever over and over for hours. The rats would refuse to eat or even sleep. They would just keep pressing the lever until they would drop from exhaustion. But then the process was reversed. The researchers blocked the release of dopamine in the brain's reward center. As a result, rats became so lethargic that even getting up to get a drink of water was not worth the effort. They wouldn't eat, they didn't want to mate, they didn't crave anything at all. You could say that the rats lost all will to live. However, if food was placed directly in their mouths, the rats would still eat and enjoy the food. They just didn't have the motivation to get up and do it themselves. You would think that it's thirst or hunger that motivates us to get food or water. But there's also dopamine that plays a key role here. Those rat experiments might be extreme cases, but you can see similar effects dopamine has in humans and in our daily lives. In fact, your brain develops priorities in large part based on how much dopamine it's expecting to get. If an activity releases too little dopamine, you won't have much motivation to do it. But if an activity releases a lot of dopamine, you'll be motivated to repeat it over and over. So, which behaviors release dopamine? Any activity where you anticipate there's a potential reward releases it. But if you know there are no immediate rewards with the behavior, your brain won't release it. For example, before you eat comfort food, your brain releases dopamine because you anticipate that the food will make you feel good. Even if it actually makes you feel worse. That's because your brain doesn't even care if the high dopamine activity is damaging to you. It just wants more of it. A stereotypical example would be someone who's a drug addict. He knows that what he's doing is not good for him, but all he wants is to get more of that drug. Besides getting you high, cocaine and heroin release unnatural amounts of dopamine, which in turn makes you crave them even more. Of course, it has to be noted that nearly everything releases some amount of dopamine, even drinking water when you're thirsty does. But the highest dopamine release happens when you get a reward randomly. One such example is playing on a slot machine in a casino. Even if you've only been losing money until that point, you eventually expect to get a bigger reward. You just don't know when it could happen. And in today's digital society, we are flooding our brains with unnaturally high amounts of dopamine on a daily basis, even if we don't know it. Some examples of high dopamine behaviors include 
scrolling through social media websites, playing video games, watching internet pornography, etc. We anticipate some sort of reward with each one of those behaviors. That's why we're constantly checking our phones. We expect to see a text message or some other notification. And we know that eventually we're going to receive it. We're becoming like those rats pulling the lever trying to get a new dopamine hit. And you might think, oh so what, it's not like it's harming me in any way. But you would be wrong. Our bodies have a biological system called homeostasis. It means that our body likes to keep internal physical and chemical conditions at a balanced level. Whenever an imbalance occurs, our body adapts to it. Let me give you an example. When it's cold outside, our body temperature falls. As a result, we start shivering to generate heat and warm the body. However, when it's hot outside, our body temperature rises and we start sweating to lose some of that heat. Essentially, our body is looking to maintain temperature of around 37 degrees Celsius or 98 degrees Fahrenheit no matter what. But there is another way homeostasis manifests itself and that is through tolerance. For example, someone who rarely drinks alcohol will get drunk really fast. But someone who drinks on a regular basis will have to drink more alcohol because their body has developed a tolerance to it. Essentially, it takes more and more alcohol to make them drunk because they've become less sensitive to its effects. And it's not much different with dopamine. Your body tries to maintain homeostasis so it down-regulates your dopamine receptors. Essentially, your brain gets used to having high levels of dopamine and those levels become your new normal. Thus, you develop a dopamine tolerance. This is one of the reasons why drug addicts who try to quit have a hard time adjusting to a normal life. Their dopamine tolerance gets so high that normal life isn't able to match it. They become like those rats from previous experiments who have no motivation to do anything if there's not enough dopamine release. Please keep in mind, this is about half of the entire presentation. If you're up for a treat, you should definitely listen to the whole thing. You can do so by clicking the link labeled View the Full Video on YouTube in the show notes. So that does it for this episode of 7 Good Minutes. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.